Today on the Grandland video blog, Batman. The Haunted Tank. Terra and Terror Titans. Hey everyone, welcome to the Grandland video blog for books that came out on December 4th, 2008. We figured that out in uh, the Marvel installment. That was good. Thanks, Froze. Yeah, Froze helping me out there. Um, this is going to be the DC installment. Quite frankly, I looked real hard for some DC books and some indie books to read. I only came up with four. I'm very sorry. I know all of you indie fans out there are going to really hate me. I did 20 minutes worth of talking about Marvel books, and I'm going to talk about, I don't know, four DC books. Not even necessarily big ones. But what can I do? This is the week that it is. It's Mar Marvel owns the week, just flat out. First up, Batman 682. The Last Rites. It's a two-part story by Grant Morrison, hopefully closing the door on his R.I.P. run. I'm very happy with this. Again, it's not, it's not a begrudging happiness. I read it, and I had to concentrate on it a lot. I had to really, really focus on what he was doing. Because any other writer would have said, you know, hey, artist, draw some sort of crazy thing to kind of denote that these panels are all, like, uh, time sequence, like I'm, I'm following through the history of the Batman. Mm. Morrison doesn't do that. He says, read it, and if they don't figure it out, F them. Whoa. And uh, I figured it out, and I'm kind of happy I did, because it actually made a little bit of sense to me. It's a very interesting. I don't know if it's actually going to accomplish anything, which is really what Grant Morrison should be trying to do, is accomplish more making things clearer to his audience. But you do get to see a little bit of where R.I.P. started and the background as to how the mental idea of Bruce Wayne being mentally uh, corrupted works here. Overall, it's pretty fun and I like the cover. I really like the crazy art cover. I'm not quite sure why it says Final Crisis in the lower corner, but it does. But hey, I don't know. It's a good book. I liked it. A shocking surprise for me over here on Haunted Tank number one. I don't normally touch vertical books with a 10 foot pole. Not because I don't like them, they're just not my bag. I, I know they're all very, very well done. I know I hear it all the time how good Vertigo is, how obviously they have this long standing, you know, from Swamp Thing through Sandman to, you know, modern classics like Why the Last Man. I respect the fact that Vertigo Line is known for telling amazing stories. Haunted Tank, I picked it up kind of out of the blue. I know it's a modern reimagining of the 70s, the 60s, 50s character, the Haunted Tank. And I, I was very excited. I was blown away. Obviously, it's Vertigo because it's soldiers in Iraq in 2003. And they talk about things that I'm not allowed to mention on this video blog. There's a lot of profanity. I'm assuming that later on there might be some nudity. Hey, who knows? Uh, it's a five-issue miniseries. And the Haunted Tank idea is that here's this famed general from the Civil War who happened to be a Confederate general <laughs> that haunts tanks. He's, he exists to be like the patron saint, the guardian angel of cavalry units. And now in modern warfare, the cavalry unit is the tank. So here's this Confederate general protecting his descendant, who happens to be a black man. Oh, yeah. Go so us. here's the white Confederate general, the hey. slave owner who fought in the War of Northern Aggression. <laughs> Going to the tank and going, man, I'm here to protect my descendant. And the black, black guy goes, uh-uh. Oh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> this is a really a fun book, though. It's, it's a good war book. If you're into war books, uh, it's not my bag, but I liked it anyway. I was, I was fascinated by this book. It's great stuff. And unlike Marvel, it's a miniseries, and you don't have to pay four bucks a shot for it. Two ninety nine, five issues. Starts now, and it's going to be a good ride. Frank, Frank Marafino and Henry Flint. Nobody and nobody on this book. No offense to Marafino and Flint. I hope you guys watch my video blog and I hope you love it. But I've never heard of you before. You're not, you know, Millar and McNiven or anything. But hey, good stuff all the same. Get on this. Don't look for a name brand and go, oh man, this is no name brand. I'm going to skip it. This is a great book, especially if you like Vertigo stuff, if you like war stories. Great. Be there. Next up, Terra number three. Again, I've been high on this book for, you know, first two issues. 
Jimmy Palmiotti, Justin Gray, Amanda Connor. What am I going to say? There's no Amanda Connor uh, strategically placed nudity in this one, unlike in number two. <laughs> Sorry. Still a very interesting book. There's a lot more meat in this one. Connor shown in two. Palmiotti and Gray are showing right now. It's, it's big. It's a big writing book. Some good art. It's a very interesting story. We figure out why exactly Terra is around, and we set up a very interesting issue for This is going to wrap up, and it's going to be an amazing four-issue miniseries that you can easily pick up for 12 bucks and have a great blast reading. Please do. This, this is what DC is doing right right now. It's not, they're not doing a lot right. This is what is going right. Lastly, Terror Titans. Speaking of what's going wrong. <laughs> okay, I like this book, but... Again, sea level characters being mutilated and destroyed and gratuitous shock violence is not going to sell books for the DC Universe. However, that's what they're still going to do. Like I said, this should still be called the Dark Side Club. It should be a Final Crisis tie in. They could actually sell things if it was. If it was Marvel, it would be called Final Crisis Terror Titans or Final Crisis Dark Side Club. Then it would actually get the trade dress, it would look right. We would see very interesting things, but ultimately, it's it's starting to become a throwaway story. But, of course, my man, as I'm a sucker for, the one I, know, and only. I know I'm in the uh, minority here, but hey, <laughs> Milestone Comics own Static oh, yeah! on the last page. I'm a big Milestone Comics fan. It's some great stuff. Uh, Chris Cross, Dwayne McDuffie, Jean-Paul Leon. Uh, some amazing creators got their starts over there, or, or contributed over there, and made some very interesting stories. And of course they got passed off as the black man's comics, because they were all black characters. Am I right, Froze? It's, it's yeah. not... What do you guys say? I don't know. I, mean, I really don't know what to say. I mean, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Well, exactly. Know, it's good stuff. Exactly. <laughs> the, the color of the characters doesn't matter. The exactly. good storytelling is there. It's still available. Bargain basement prices. I'm still trying to complete my collection. But these characters are coming back. Next week, we're going to have Justice League of America with Icon's big return. Oh, yeah. So it's a good time for the DC universe. Let's hope that DC editorial doesn't screw it up. Yeah. So, unfortunately, I'm sorry. This is the spot where I would be reviewing a fifth book right now. But, again... <laughs> I didn't see anything good from DC, anything good indie, so I'm just going to say it again. Go read Marvel, go read Secret Invasion 8, and most importantly, go read X-Men Noir number one. Oh, yeah. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week.